happens when you start spending time with God. Nah. What are you talking about? Uh uh. What is they saw? That's what they call spiritual glow up. People will hate you. That joy is not circumstantial. Joy is relational. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> My name is Grace and on this channel I talk about everything about my weight loss, my lifestyle and my faith. So today we're going to be talking about what happens when you start spending time with God. So I'm going to start a discussion series where I ask a question and we get to discuss in the comment section. I want to know your opinion, ideas, what you're thinking about this question and then I get to share my own opinion or what I've experienced during the video. So I hope you guys love this series and if you guys have questions you want me to tackle during this series, don't forget to leave it in your comment down below. And if you're worried about it getting lost in the comments, you can simply shoot me an email at gracetokennya at gmail.com which is going to be on the screen. Or you can hit me up on Instagram which is underscore graceukenny. So without much ado, let's get into this video. Don't forget to like, share, leave your comments down below and if you do not want to miss my future videos, turn on post notifications and let's get started so what happens when you start spending time with god why should we even spend time with god in the first place that's what i'm asking you before i start dishing out my ideas i'm just going to say a short prayer to be led by the holy spirit so heavenly father i thank you oh lord for the chance to speak your truth at the end of days i pray oh lord that when they hear your word you will receive the revelation of your word in the name of jesus amen first of all i'd like to say why do you start spending time with god we spend time with god to have a close relationship with god and you spend time with God to come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, to know the gospel. The word of God helps us to be a little more like Jesus each day. So you cannot be like Jesus for night. The aim is to be more like Jesus each day, right? So it's just like having this huge goal and then you have to smash it into little, little goals that you plan to conquer in the span of, let's say, one year or two years. But when it comes to the Christian dog, it's a long, everlasting walk you have with Christ. Even when you go towards eternity, then you pass on. It's not something you say, oh, the Christian race will work for like a few years and no, that's not how it works. So it's like to be more like Jesus, to get closer to God, to build a thriving relationship with God. We have a personal relationship with God, right? So now, what happens when you start doing this? When you say, okay, yes, I want to be closer to God. I want God to speak to me. I want to have this with Jesus. I want to do this. I want to do that. What happens? The first one is a renewed mind. I'm going to be using Good News Bible. Romans 12 2 says, Do not conform yourselves to the standard of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing, to him and it's perfect when you see the truth you will have a renewed mind so in the world of today things that you hear about are called facts things that your scientists will tell you are called facts that means they can prove why this is this and why this is that but when it comes to christendom when it comes to things of the kingdom we don't call them facts i believe they are truths romans 6 17 b says thanks be to god for though at one time you were slaves to sin you have obeyed with all your heart the truths found in the teaching you received so the bible calls it truths and if you go and read other versions they are called something else when you receive these truths by spending time with god you have a renewed mind okay the next one is confidence. When you begin to spend time with God, you have this newfound confidence. Now, when I speak about confidence, I do not mean the confidence of not being shy or being bold enough to speak in crowds or not having stage fright. That's not what I'm talking about. When I say confidence, I mean when you know your identity in Christ, you have this new boldness to declare who you are. And because you know who you are in Christ, you do not let some things waver you. Do not let some things affect you. Ephesians 3 12 says, In union with Christ and through our faith in Him, we have the boldness to go into God's presence with all confidence. It's just like you having reassurance. You know the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like you're certain, you're sure, and you speak with this newfound boldness. There's just a spring in your step. You're like, uh uh, letting a stop. Nothing is going to waver you. So there will be trials, there will be tribulation, but you just have this assurance. You have this surety that there is someone that loves you and that's always going to be there for you. Period. 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 Put a Brit. I was unnecessary. The next one is true joy. Acts 2.28 says, You have showed me the paths that lead to life, and your presence will fill me with joy. Now, true joy comes from God. 
Joy comes from knowing God. This means that joy comes from your relationship with God. Joy is not circumstantial. Joy is relational. When you get closer to God, your joy increases. So the closer you are to God, the more joy you will see. Doing an altar call sometime on a Sunday when a pastor said, if you're not going to go and come out, let's pray for you. And when all those people began to come out, do you know what I said in my heart? I did this unconsciously. I just said, oh my gosh, you do not know how much joy that is about to come into your life. That's about to flood your life. And I was like, oh wow, I didn't even realize I said that. I just said it in my mind, like when I was just in my thoughts. Just to show you that ever since I began spending time with God, I've just had so much joy. This is not to say that you will not have bad days because you will have. You will have trials and tribulations but even in trying times you can still find joy James 1 2 says my brothers and sisters consider yourself fortunate when all kinds of trials come your way for you know that when your faith succeeds in facing such trials the result is the ability to endure when you're able to like supersede those trials and tribulations what do you have you have endurance and that is good you have troubles that's why there will be testimonies so I heard this thing that without troubles there's no testimony Testimony saying, oh, I got this after so so problem, right? So if there's no trouble or problem, there will not be a testimony. So you feel me? So joy comes from God. Spending time with God gives you so much joy. I don't know how to explain this again. I just know that you receive so much joy. Like ever since I said spending time with God, my joy has been overflowing. Thank you, Jesus. So the next one is your identity in Christ. I think I already said it in previous points. You just know who you are, your identity in Christ. So when you know who you are, you just know the kind of things you can take and things you cannot take. You're like, if I'm a child of God, certain things I'm not supposed to do this. Certain things I'm not supposed to indulge in this. I'm not supposed to allow this kind of thing to come into my life. Do you understand? Because you know who you are. You have the core knowledge of who you truly are in Christ Jesus. You begin to like associate from certain things, you begin to associate from certain people. And when you begin to do all these kind of things, you start to see change. Like, bruh, like, what are you talking about? That's what they call spiritual glow up. Charlie, I don't know how to explain it anymore. The next one is unnecessary thinking. This one, I'm not saying it happens to everybody once you start spending time with God, but this is one thing I noticed. So you start to think about a lot of things, like how people see me, what do people say, this. I call it unnecessary thinking because I don't think you need to think about such things. You're like wondering, like the whole point of you coming to Jesus, obviously there is going to be a change. So the fact that you're thinking that, what are people going to say, what are people going to think, will they react to a certain way to my lifestyle or this, it just means you're pointed towards the right direction because if you feel like people will behave a certain way or like that means you are thinking or your aim is to be more like Jesus because the Bible tells us in John 15 18 that if the world hates you just remember it has hated me first when Jesus was on earth just imagine Jesus that had no sin Jesus that was clean that no infinity people hated him. us that are born with a sinful nature who do you think that like, people will hate you like it's just normal you have to unnecessary thing. I don't know if everybody experiences, but I did experience this when I started spending a lot of time with God. I started wondering like how people see this. The next one is attack from the devil. This is a struggle with our sinful nature. I'm naturally born with a sinful nature. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans 6 23 that the wages of sin is dirt. And when we begin to spend time with God, the devil is not happy. So you start having spiritual attacks. The devil is trying all he can to pull you back. He's saying, okay, she has not got to that stage where she is solely and firmly grounded in the world so i still have chance to like you know try to fill her mind with things that just corrupt her mind and bring her back to where she was do you understand romans 6 says and we know that our old being has been put to death with christ on his cross in order that the power of that sinful self might be destroyed we are naturally born with sinful nature but when we come into the saving knowledge of christ when we become born again when we receive salvation our sinful nature dies just like when a newborn is born, that newborn doesn't have a past. The newborn only has a present and a future. So once you become born again, your past is erased. All things are passed away. All things are become new. You become a new creature. But the devil will use those things you have done in the past to like corrupt your mind. Tell you, you did this, you did that, so God doesn't love you. You're not a true child of God. You have all these struggles. So you will have attack from the devil several times. In short, continuously. 
So this is something I've experienced and I would like to know what your thoughts is on this. When you began spending time with God or when people begin to spend time with God, do they experience spiritual attacks from the devil or from whatever comes? Because the Bible tells us wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. So I want to know, do they experience spiritual attack? Please answer that in the comment section. Let's discuss. The next one is hunger and thirst for righteousness. So you have this deep longing for the things of God. Your passion for God just skyrockets. You'll be like, I want to do more. You just get excited when it comes to things of God. Psalm 42 verse 1 to 2 says, I said, there longs for a stream of cool water. So I long for you, O God. I thirst for you, the living God. Where can I go and worship in your presence? This thirst for God just spring up in you. It's like a flowing tap that's gushing. When you begin to spend time with God, you find it so exciting. If before you couldn't read your Bible, now you are eager to read your Bible. When it comes to Bible study, you are excited to do. This is not to say that you are always going to be excited because we are human beings and sometimes our human nature can be tricky. We want to do other things, we want to binge on social media, we want to watch a movie. But more times than not, you will be excited about the things of God. You will have a huge interest it you have this passion this burning desire to do the things of god it's not something that be like nah or someone will have to force you to do it. do you understand like you just want to do more so i think i've said a lot of things i've experienced and what i think happens when you start spending time with god there are so much more and i would like to conclude this in a part two of this video series so i want to know what your thoughts are on this what do you think happen when you begin to spend time with god what do you feel like happen and do you have things that you are actually thought happens but you have not experienced before and you're confused about or do you have a question about something or anything please be sure to put the comments down below let's discuss in depth about all these things thanks for watching this far don't forget to like share comment let's do this in the comment section please and if you're not missing any future videos turn on your post notifications and i will see you in the comment section bye